In this tutorial, I'm going to show you some practical examples with M Spectral Dynamics. The covered topics are vocal sibilance control, eliminating special collisions, overall spectral compression. So let's start. Here is an example of a vocal track I'm going to work on. Please pay attention to sibilant consonant sounds of a performer. Have you changed the locks? Can I still turn the key? The same the way I pictured us to be, baby. Have you told your boys or hollered to your friends? Burn the pictures of us hating me until the end. Baby, no. Don't let go. Trust in me. I won't leave. I mark the most problematic parts in yellow color. It is that sibilant sound that makes them unpleasant to listen to. Like he. It should us to be. Or there. Trust him. If we check the signal on M analyzer, we will notice that the frequency response of the sound S rather looks like a bunch of sine waves with a higher level single peaks than a filtered noise as we would expect. Trust him. And that is what causes a sibilance. To deal with this issue, there are two possible solutions. The first and quick option is applying Deesser plugin. However, it won't cure the problem. Deesser simply reduces the overall level of sibilance and doesn't change their sound. The second would be going through the recording, finding similar sounds, and copying and pasting them instead of the problematic sounds. However, this is quite a time consuming method. Plus, the result doesn't always sound natural. Instead, I'm going to use M Spectral Dynamics to smooth out the frequency response of the sibilant consonants and thus to make them more pleasant to listen to. Here is the edit window of the plugin. I will quickly go through some controllers to explain their purpose. Quality. As I'm going to work on very narrow parts of a spectrum, I will select the high setting here. Thus, M Spectral Dynamics will do the most accurate job. Resolution is at 10 milliseconds. This is quick enough to follow the changes in the vocal track. I set smoothness and naturality to 0% as I need M Spectral Dynamics to be as selective as possible. I wanted to work on every single peak individually, and setting smoothness to something more than 0% will deviate the plugin from this task. Slope is probably the most tricky parameter when it comes to a spectral compression. It will affect the outcome hugely. There are no particular rules you must follow with this one. Rather, go by trial and error and see what works best. Some mixing engineers believe a spectrum should follow a plus three decibel slope so it looks flat on one third octave frequency analyzer. Others think it should be the equal loudness curve the mix must tend to. There are some who simply use a current hit from charts as a guide and match the sound to it. I would suggest you try all these options. It is also a good idea to study psychoacoustics. For now, I will set plus four decibels as a starting point. General parameters are left at their default settings. I set attack and release times lower than resolution to make sure I don't slow down the plugin's response to the incoming signal changes. The rest of the dynamic section parameters are at default settings. I start with the threshold at zero decibels. Later, I'm going to use the free form threshold editor to draw the curve I need. Ratio is going to be set to infinity as I'm planning on using M Spectral Dynamics for de as well and I want the sibilance to be at more or less the same level. Knee size and range are on default. Now I'm going to play the problematic part of the audio to define the frequency range I need to concentrate on. Baby, no, don't let go. Trust in me. Here is the area of my concern. Now I need to reduce the threshold in this area only to leave the rest of the spectrum untouched. For that, I'm going to create a step-like shape. Like this. And from now on, I will move this part of the threshold only. Now let's play back the vocal track and adjust the threshold to smooth out the sibilance. Have you changed the locks? Can I still turn the key? The same way I pictured us to be, baby.
Have you told your boys or hollered to your friends? Burn the pictures of us hating me until the end. Baby, no, don't let go. Trust in me. I will set the threshold approximately here. I'm happy with the sibilant consonants. They sound much smoother and pleasant. Another trick to try is applying M spectral dynamics to a group of tracks. Here, in a chorus, there are eight vocal tracks. Because they sound all together, I don't need to worry about sibilant's control of each track separately. Instead, I will send them into one stereo group, insert M spectral dynamics, and treat them more as a single voice. This method gives me a better control over the sibilance as its total level will stay more or less the same during the chorus. If I treat each vocal part separately and mix them after, the final sibilance level will be less predictable. I won't go into details as the whole idea of applying M spectral dynamics is the same as it was shown in the example with a single vocal track. Let's first hear the chorus without M spectral dynamics. I'm coming back to you, my love. Everything about you so beautiful, wonderful. I'm coming back to you, my man. Close my eyes, I see us back again, holding hands. And with. I'm coming back to you, my love. Everything about you so beautiful, wonderful. I'm coming back to you, my man. Close my eyes, I see us back again, holding hands. As always with processing, the key thing here is to not overdo the spectral compression. Otherwise, your performer may start sounding as if she has a lisp. In the following example, I'm going to show you how you can minimize spectral collision between two sources. I'll take a classic example of a bass drum versus another bass instrument. However, you can apply this technique to any sounds. It is quite common for a bass drum to occupy the same part of a spectrum where another bass instrument plays. This can lead to the situation when one instrument masks another one, like in this example. I can also confirm it if I open M multi analyzer in both drums and bass channels. Now I can even see all collisions between these two parts. Sure, I could simply turn the bass channel down, however, as it consists of the whole notes, it may turn into a pad like sound rather than a bass line. This is simply unacceptable for R&B. I still want the bass to stand out, but with some room for the bass drum when needed. To achieve that, I'm going to insert M Spectral Dynamics into the bass channel and use its side chain input. As the name suggests, a side chain input allows you to control a compressor from outside by an external signal. However, as you might have already guessed, in the case of M Spectral Dynamics, it's going to be one spectrum controller over another. And in our case, it will be the signal from the bass drum track telling M Spectral Dynamics on the bass channel which part of the frequency range it must suppress to make room for it. Thus, M Spectral Dynamics will work as a dynamic equalizer with the difference being that I don't need to worry about tuning it to a particular frequency and setting a bandwidth. All that I need is to provide a signal at the sidechain input and M Spectral Dynamics will do the rest. So let's insert the plugin into the bass channel. Select Ducking Bass Plus Drums preset and activate a side chain. Now, I need to go to the Drums channel, open Sends tab, and create a Send to M Spectral Dynamics side chain. I move a fader to 0 decibels and select Move to Pre Fader mode. 
Thus, even if I change the drum track level during mixing later, my action won't affect the work of M Spectral Dynamics on the bass channel. Everything is set, so let's hear it. I'm moving dry wet dial to find a position when the bass drum isn't muffled by the bass and the last one still sounds like a bass. If I go to 100%, you can clearly hear how the bass is losing its bottom end on every bass drum's hit. It happens because M Spectral Dynamics affects only the low end of the bass sound. At the same time, most of the harmonics stay at their original level. If you use a classic compressor instead of M Spectral Dynamics here, the level of the entire bass sound including all harmonics will be reduced. So if you're after such an effect, you need a tool like M Dynamics. Make sure to try out the rest of the controllers. As for me, I leave the dial in this position. Let's hear it again. In the last part of this tutorial, I'd like to introduce overall spectral compression. What I mean is applying M Spectral Dynamics to the entire mix. By doing that, you can create more appealing sound and achieve some spectral density. However, if overdone, it can ruin all your hard work. So here is an instance of M Spectral Dynamics on the master bus. A load flattening preset, which was created for this sort of task originally. Let's play some music and hear the effect. Have you changed the To set the amount of spectral compression I need, I turn dry wet dial. Very simple. Make sure to try the other two presets as well. Flattening medium and flattening hard. The idea is the same. The main difference is in ratio value. The effect is in turning up small details in the mix. Now let's go to the edit page of the plugin to get a better understanding of what is going on under the bonnet. First let's move every slider at the bottom and see what each of them controls. As you can see, Tone Slider is responsible for slope and hard flattening controls temp gain. When applying the overall spectral compression, pay attention to reduction curve at the top of the analyzer and equalizer window. In general, it shouldn't go below minus 10 decibels. And as with any compressor, make sure RMS levels before and after end spectral dynamics are the same. You could use two graphs representing input and output spectrums as a guide for setting up the output level. For example, if I set the output level to 0 decibels and press playback, I can see that output signal is lower than the one at the input. I move the output slider to match their levels in general. You also could use M Multi Analyzer to set output level more precisely. Insert two instances of them before and after M Spectral Dynamics. Open Loudness tab. Playback your mix, the difference between before and after is the value from output level for M Spectral Dynamics. Keep in mind this type of compression won't give you the same feeling of a compressed signal as you get after a traditional compressor, so overdoing it is very easy. Please remember. Though you do increase the mixer's spectral density, you diminish a dynamic coherence between its elements at the same time. Consider the spectral compression as an extreme version of multiband compression. Here is an example of when things went wrong.
It might be considered a special effect, but this is probably not what you would do to your mix after spending a couple of days on it. As usual, if in doubt, don't apply. That's all for me from now. I hope you learned something new from this tutorial. See you next time.